Good morning. Mm, sorry, James from Ingvid. That probably raises a few questions for you. Why did he say good morning when it could be any time in the world? Yeah. Well, I'm going to help you today because that is a common word that we use in English. But there are some other words that are similar that many people make a mistake with. And I'm going to help you learn them today. That's raise, rise, arrays, lay, and lie. Now, quick story. When I first heard this 10 years ago, I was teaching, and a teacher asked me, James, why do we raise or why do we rise? And I didn't know. I honestly didn't know. Um, we, of course, I know what, when to use them, but my problem was um, we just know because we've been taught but no one actually sits you down and said the exact difference is this. So I had to study it. And today I'm going to help you not make the mistake I, I made by knowing what it is and how to use it. Or use them because we have five words. Let's go to the board. Do I raise my hand or rise my hand? Tough question if you don't know the differences between them. And I'm hoping this lesson will help you. In fact, by the time we're done, you should master this and be more fluent in your English use. First one, arise. <laughs> if you ever watched any sci scientific movie, sci-fi movie, there's some dead creature and some crazy magician or scientist goes, arise. Well, we don't quite use it like that in English. We use it a little differently. When we talk about arise, we mean something has occurred or something has happened. A few things arose when you were away on vacation. That means things happened or occurred. Another way of saying it is come up. If you look at Mr. E at the bottom of the stairs, Mr. E too says, hey, come here. And he goes up the stairs. So something has come up. Um, hey, listen, there's a couple of things that, uh, when I said arose or have arisen, things have come up or occurred that have happened and I want to talk about them. Okay, cool. That's arise. Now, one other thing about arise, let's just talk about it for a second. Arise is an irregular verb. Irregular verb? Well, most verbs follow a simple pattern. You add ed or add d to the end, it's past tense. There's a base form, and then there's the, uh, the past participle form. And, you know, looks like ed, ed, and regular form. Easy. Irregular verbs means they don't follow that rule, so you have to change it. And unfortunately, there's no way for me to teach you and say, well, every irregular verb, you must do this. They're irregular because different ones look different ways. Sorry. But I'm going to help you by putting it here. And you can also go and study the charts for irregular verbs. Okay? I believe we have some on our Ingvid tools you can use or resources. So arise, as I said, come up, is an irregular verb. It doesn't follow the regular rules. So you're going to have to pay attention when I show you how it's spelt. The second thing I have here is intransitive. I spelled it over here for you, but intransitive. Intransitive. Well, trans in English, or sorry, Latin means across. It means it goes from one place to another. An intransitive verb means it doesn't take a direct object. Huh? Well, here's an example of transitive verb. I love. If you're sitting, sitting there, you're probably thinking to yourself, you love what? Ice cream, football, your mother, your shoes? Well, with a transitive verb, it takes an object or a direct object, meaning it has an effect on something else. I love you. Yeah, I do. I think vid watcher, I love you. You are my object. My love goes to you. That's what a transitive verb means. So the verb has to carry a cross to an object. While an interesting in, intransitive verb doesn't need that. All right? Um, well, I'll give you an example in a second because we have a few on the board. But in this case, arise is an intransitive verb, right? You don't need to have an object with it, okay? Here, I'm going to give you the forms. Arise is present tense. Arose is past tense. And when you use the past perfect or present perfect, use arisen, okay? Problems have arisen. They arose last week. They will arise, and that's a future tense, okay? Here's an example for you. Pay attention. I'm going to go low, real low. A few problems have arisen since I started the project. Okay, 
Let's look at the next word. It looks like arise, and it's rise. Similar, but a little different. Rise means to get higher. Look at Mr. E. He's lying down. If you can imagine I'm lying on a bed, if I rise, I lift myself up and I come to a higher position. So you're here and you go higher. Now, rise is also an irregular verb. See, it's irregular. What do you mean by irregular? Well, remember what I said before, it doesn't follow the same grammar rules of adding just an S or a D. In this case, we have rise, which is present tense, rose, which is past tense, and risen, which is the perfect tense, okay? To give you a sentence to help you understand it, please rise for the national anthem. Huh? Well, there's probably two words you don't know, so let's explain them. National anthem, uh, nation comes from nation or country. Anthem is the song for the country. Most countries have a song that represents their country. So when they go to sporting events or the prime minister or president is in the country, they play this special song and everybody will stand up and show their respect to their leader or respect for their country. In Canada, it's called Oh Canada. Yeah, very original, Canada. Oh, Canada, it's like we just remembered we live here. Okay, I didn't make it up. So when they say, please rise for the national anthem, I'm going to go higher. I'm going to get my bum up and stand up. Oh, Canada. Yeah, oh, Canada, I couldn't figure that out. <laughs> okay, so we rise, we stand for the national anthem or we get higher. And that's what rise means. Now, let's do the last one, which kind of looks funny because it looks similar, but there's a difference. There's an A and it's raise. Now, this one means to get higher, but raise means to make higher or bring up children. Well, that almost sounds the same. No. To get higher in this case, when we rise, you do it. When you raise something, you make something else do it. And that's what I put bring up children. You can't make children get taller. You raise them, you help them as they get bigger. So they are not doing it themselves. You help by giving them food and water and a place to live, okay? So you're helping make something occur or happen, which is different than you doing it yourself. Let's take a look at raise then. Funny enough, it's the only regular verb here. It's regular, meaning it follows the rules. Its base form is this, and it's past, and it's past participle is just add ed. Easy enough, easy to remember. Now look at this. When you think about rising out of bed, you do it yourself, right? Example, I rise at 6 a.m. I know it's a bit formal. And if you say it, they'll go, okay, you rise. The rest of us get up. But you rise at 6 a.m. You're saying, I get myself up out of bed at 6. That's early. <laughs> but if you raise something, you make it happen. What do you mean? Well, look here. They raised the price. Trust me, the price didn't wake up one morning and go, I'm a dollar fifty. Today, a dollar seventy-five. It doesn't work like that. Somebody physically went, buck fifty, you're now one seventy-five. Okay, I am raised. Somebody moved it. So raised means somebody has moved it. Rise means it does it itself. And to arise means to occur. They all have the similar meaning that things are getting higher. Because if you look here, Mr. E goes up the stairs and goes higher. If you look here, somebody raised it. E, <laughs> E with the force. Hiya. Okay, he raised. And this way, it's like a ghost. E is coming up by himself. Cool? So we've got that under control. Let's do the next two. Are you ready? Let's go to the board. Making sure we remember irregular and intransitive. Good, we did that here. Don't forget, you have to recall it, remember it. Lie versus lay. I've been told this is like one of the hardest word combinations for most people learning the language simply because, well, you'll see in a second, they're kind of connected in a way and they shouldn't be, but this is English. Lie means to recline, huh? Yeah, another difficult world. What the heck does recline mean? Well, imagine you're about to go into bed. You put your leg up on the bed. You sit back and then you do this. 
that's reclining. I'm reclining. I can't recline much more because I will hit the floor. Okay, but I'm lying down and then I do this. Oh, and I go to sleep. Reclined means a flat position. To recline means you make yourself recline. I lie on the bed. You should go lie on the bed. Does this sound familiar? Yeah, remember we talked about rise? When something rises, it does it itself? Yeah, it does it itself and you lie yourself. People cannot make you lie down. I will make you lie down. No, I will lie down, okay? So I will make myself go down. I will recline, All right? Now lie is an irregular verb. Yeah, I'm sorry, I told you. There were like no regular ones, just this little puppy over here. That's the problem, because now you have all these spelling things you have to remember. But life's not easy, nor is English, but you're tough, so let's get back here. So lie, we have lie, lay, and lane. I have lane. I have lain with the princess before. <laughs> right, no one says this, okay? But look, I have a star, or it's called asterisk. Like, asterisk. So if you can remember that, that'll help you. Don't slap your butt when you say, I'm gonna put an asterisk here. <laughs> the teachers will go, please don't touch yourself, okay? But I'll come to that in a second because you'll see there's a second one we have to talk about. So these are the irregular forms of lie, okay? Now, here's an example. I'm tired. I'm going to lie down. No one will carry you and put you in the bed. You will physically go over and lie down. We're cool, right? Yeah, simple enough, easy. Here's me lying on the bed. I am now reclined. I have a small problem. I am not smiling. I should be smiling. I'm lying down, okay? And I need to lie down because the rest of this lesson gets a little bit confusing, but if you pay attention, It'll be easy. And that snap does not mean test yet. Wait, first finish the lesson. Lay, lay, okay. Uh-oh, I saw lay here. Shh, wait, wait, I told you, wait. Lay means to put down or place something. So when I lay the pen on my hand, I place it there. Do you remember when I said rise, you do it yourself? Well, when you lay something, you have to do it with something else. You have to, yeah, that's right. Now we're gonna find out it's transitive. Huh? Told you it'd come up. Transitive means there's an object. You have to lay something, okay? When you lie down, that's it. I'm going to lie down, boom. I don't need anything else. I am the object itself in transit, in transitive, no problem. Lay means you are doing something to something else. So you need an object. I lay my coat on the bed, right? I lay the glass on the table. I need an object. Something's got to move. So that's something for you to remember when you use lay. There should be something, an object. We look here again, and we've talked about transitive, but look at irregular. Why did I say irregular? You know, there's there are two things here, but here, there's no E. Remember before I said with regular verbs, you will either add a D or an ED, and that's how it's regular. In this case, it's ID. Sorry, once again, it's the English language. So lay and laid. But do you remember we talked about the two asterisks? Asterisks? <laughs> One, two. And look carefully, you'll see the same word is used in two different places. But James, they're totally different verbs. Yeah, here's why. In this case, lay is the past of lie. Okay, he lay on the bed for hours. It's the past of lie. In this case, it's a verb by itself. Don't ask me why. I would love to explain to you why this happened, who did it. There's some guy right now, he's dead. He's laughing his ass off. Remember the ass thing? He's like, <laughs> lay is lay, lay is lay, lay is lay. <laughs> Knowing that you're coming to Canada going, I lay on the bed, is this right? And I laid the pen down. Why? I don't understand. You tell me I do, they'll depend us. I am so confused. Yeah, I know. So take a breath. And just remember, simply, lay is used twice. When we talk about lie, it is the past, okay, of lie, lay. But lay 
is a verb by itself that has its own meaning and the meaning is completely different. If you are moving a thing and putting it or placing it somewhere else, you must use lay. Clear. If you are doing it by yourself, like going to bed and lying down, you use lie. And you use lay only in the past tense. Sorry, folks. This is something you have to remember and understand because there's no real, there's no real rule why. It's just that's the way it is. Okay. If it helps at all, lay is transitive. And I've explained, you must make something else and you must mention the object. So if there are two things, use lay. I lay the pen on the bed or she lay um, her blouse on the grass. Okay. Lie is just for you, intransitive. Go lie down. You don't need to say anything else, right? Now, the examples, of course. I did, I'm tired, I'm going to lay down here or lie down. Now, when we talk about lay here, please lay the book on the table. And you'll notice here, I use lay. Okay, I got book, I got table. Subject, well, not subject, you are the subject here, right? You're not talking about you, you're not here, but please lay the book on the table. We're talking about the book which receives the action. Okay, those are the two things. You're the subject and book. Here, I'm going to lie down. With what? With where? With whom? Doesn't matter. Just me. Cool? All right. It's time for the quiz. Ready? Okay. Listen, there are a couple of things I lied to you about. Hmm? You're not reclining. No, I'm not reclining because I want to teach you another meaning for lie that you may not be aware of or you may not know. Lie has two meanings. The first one we talked about, lie down, recline, go back. The second is to not tell the truth. This means what I'm saying to you is not real. I'll give you an example. Look at me now. Okay, close your eyes, open them. I am now a seven foot tall, blonde haired, blue eyed NBA basketball star. Yeah, it's not true. You can tell that, right? Yeah. I lied to you. I didn't tell you the truth. I told you something that is not real. So you have to be careful and listen to the context because in the context of someone is lying to you, lie can be a noun or a verb, right? It means not telling the truth. He's lying to you. Don't believe him. Verb. He told me a lie. I used an article before the word lie. So just watch out for that by what listening to the context. If I say, if you're tired, you need to go lie down, recline. Um, you're not tired. Stop lying to me. Or you told me a lie when you said you were tired. Context means, hey, don't sleep. Tell the truth. Cool? All right. Let's look at raise, which is another word with two meanings that, you know, this one is funny. It's kind of related, but not, but pay attention because once again, context, and in this case, especially an article will help you. Raise means, means to make something go higher. We discussed that. So, you know, if someone said, I got a raise, it means an increase in pay. So if you're making say $10 an hour, you might make $12. Your pay has been increased. Somebody has made something go higher, your pay. But in this case, it's a noun. So when your friend goes, hey, I got a raise at work. I can afford the new car. Nobody put them in the chair and lifted them higher. They gave them more money. Okay. So listen for that article and you'll know it's not the verb usage. Are we good? Those are some helpful hints. Now it's time for our quiz. All right. We're going to do this one to make sure you're ready for the big quiz. See how strong you are. Let's go to the board. Some questions about the new rules arose or raised in the meeting. Which one do you think it would be? Well, something happened at the meeting, right? Something came up. And we remember when something comes up or happened, we should use arose. And I don't mean the kiss, the kiss, the uh, seal song. Na, 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 na. Batman fan, anyone? I'm wearing the cuffs. Anyway, 
seriously, I'm wearing Batman cuffs. Yeah. Some of you who have watched my videos before, you'll go, he's a freak. <laughs> Other people, yeah, get used to me. Okay, so a rose. Let's look at the next one. They lay the blanket on the floor. They lie the blanket on the floor. Which one? Okay, they lay. Remember we talked about lie is when you recline and lay is when you place something? Well, they're putting the blanket. See what I changed the word to put? I can put placing, I can say lay. So they lay the blanket on the floor. Cool. Let's do number three. What do you think? Will it be rise or raise? I got a last week. Rise or raise? If you were listening to me carefully, I said, look out for those articles. So was it a pay rise? No, it was a pay raise. You got more money. Congratulations. I want some. <laughs> okay. And now, last but not least, please, your hand if you have a question. Would it be raise your hand or rise your hand? Hmm, it's good. But actually it's this one, raise, because you're going to make your hand go higher. Good try though, uh, three out of four. And some of you I know got four out of four, congratulations. But you know, if you wanna work this a little bit more, watch the video again, or we can go do the big boy quiz, big person quiz, sorry, 21st century. The big person quiz at where? Well, www ing as in English. I always get that wrong. I don't know, for you guys, ing as in English, v, v as in video, dot com, where there's the larger quiz and other videos you can watch. Once again, don't forget to subscribe um, somewhere here. And thank you. It's always a pleasure helping you. And we look forward to your questions, comments, compliments, mm, concerns. <laughs> we could say that. And I'll see you soon, okay? Do the quiz.